Good afternoon. Please be seated. My name is Ira Wagner, and I am the chair of the Board of Trustees for Southern Vermont College, and I have the distinct pleasure of officially opening the college's 90th commencement ceremony. A very warm welcome to all of you, families, friends, special guests, and may I offer the first of what will be many congratulations to the individuals we are celebrating today, our graduates. I'd like to begin by introducing you to my colleagues on the board, the senior leadership of the college, and our distinguished guest. Members of the platform party, please stand when I call your name and remain standing. Audience, please hold your applause until all have been named. Other trustees in attendance today include Mark Manley, David Newell, Toby Potterton, Marjorie Greg Swain, and David Rees Evans, president of the college. Also seated on the platform are Jennifer Maxey, Vice President for Administration and Finance, Nina Moser, Vice President for College Advancement, Daniel Summers, Vice President and Dean of Admissions, James White, Provost and Dean of the College, Heather Quire, Associate Provost for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, Jason Sampler, Registrar, and our honored guest, honorary degree recipient and commencement speaker, Nicholas D'Onofrio. A round of applause, please. Thank you. Seated to my left are the faculty and staff of the college. In the front row are the faculty chairs who guide each of the five academic divisions. As I call your name, will you please stand? Scott Stein, chair of the Donald Everett Axon Division of Social Sciences. Jennifer Nelson, Chair of the John Merck Division of Science and Technology. Jennifer Berg, Chair of the Hunter Division of the Humanities. Stacy Hills, Chair of the McCormick Division of Business. And Mary Botter, Chair of the Division of Nursing. Please give a special round of applause for our division chair. Graduates, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I congratulate all of you for what you have accomplished. Whether you are earning a diploma or a certificate for learning today, you have increased your economic prospects and quite possibly increased your life expectancy. And I'll get back to that point in a minute. As a business numbers kind of person, I was recently reading some economic research put out by the Federal Reserve Board that shows that for U.S. workers, the benefits of college in terms of higher earnings far outweigh the total costs of earning a degree. Those costs are measured not only as the cost of tuition and housing and books and all the things you pay for, but also the opportunity cost of lost earnings while you're attending school. This research showed that once your college investment is paid for, which typically takes about 20 years, seems like a long time, but in your lifetime, it's not so long. Your degree will pay you economic dividends throughout the rest of your working life, meaning substantially higher lifetime earnings by retirement age. I know, you don't want to think about retirement just yet, but bear with me as I give my remarks here. So I graduated from Southern Vermont College with a business degree in 1983, and I feel very fortunate to tell you that earning that degree at age 31 and then going on to earn an MBA paved the way for me to achieve beyond the wildest dreams I ever could have thought of. Having that degree, to borrow the words of local Vermont poet Robert Frost, has made all the difference. And importantly, it's taught me that I can make a difference. This academic year, in the winter, SVC hosted a screening of a documentary about Julius Rosenwald, one of the founders of Sears Roebuck over 100 years ago in the early 1900s. 
and he was the real driving force behind the success and growth of Sears. And with the fortune he earned through the success, success of Sears, and with a deep concern for racial inequality in America, Rosenwald used his wealth to become one of America's most effective philanthropists. His philanthropy was the catalyst for building over 5,000 schools for African Americans in the rural South from 1915 into the 1930s. The Rosenwald Fund also provided support to many African American artists and writers we have come to know and love, such as Maya Angelou, W.E.B. Du Bois, Gordon Parks, Marian Anderson, James Baldwin, and many others. He is the least well-known major philanthropist in American history, but his spirit and values continue to this day. So I want to tell you about another philanthropist that I read about recently. I recently heard a podcast about another not so well-known philanthropist who really made a difference. Henry Rowan, he was an MIT trained engineer. He knew that he wanted to give back to higher education that had enabled him to become so successful with his company based in New Jersey. But rather than give significantly to his pretty well off alma mater, MIT, he chose to give his money to the small, relatively unknown college near his home in New Jersey named Glassboro State College. And because of Rowan's generosity to Glassboro State College, that college has blossomed and is now named Rowan University. And not because Mr. Rowan asked for the college to be named for him, but rather because the college insisted on it after he made his gift to the college. And when asked why he gave his money to Glassboro State College, Mr. Rowan said, I enjoy making a difference in this world. So graduates, I applaud your worthwhile investment in college and your hard work and accomplishment to get to this day, and I wish you all the success in the world. But I don't mean to imply that success is measured only by making and giving away money. That is just one way that philanthropists have helped create real change at institutions such as this wonderful school. How you can make a difference is also measured by time. How your time is spent, whether in a helpful service career in criminal justice, psychology, radiologic sciences, or nursing, or in the business world or the arts, is also a way to give back to the world. Use your time well. So back to that life expectancy comment earlier. According to a US Center for Disease Control, lifelong learning is linked to longevity, adding about nine years to your life. So I hope you will think of yourselves as lifelong learners. Earning a degree is just the start of something that could quite possibly increase your lifespan. Again, our congratulations on your accomplishment today. Stay curious, class of 2017, and remember how SVC made a difference in your life. In the years ahead, we are confident that all of you will find the time to make a difference in the world. Now, without further ado, let us enjoy the music of Pro Professor Eric Despard, Director of Music at SVC, and then we will hear remarks from our President, David Evans. Thank you.
Thank you for that lovely interlude, Eric. Thank you all. And a warm welcome to all of you. It is truly wonderful to see so many families, friends, staff, students, and alumni here today to honor our graduates. The joy and energy of this day make it a favorite of everyone who works here. It is a genuine pleasure to share in the accomplishments of the graduates we celebrate today. This has been a challenging year for the United States. We endured a highly polarized and far, far too long presidential campaign, followed by an election whose outcome surprised nearly everyone, causing both deep distress and intense celebration around the country, and emphasizing political, social, and cultural divisions that seem to have become permanent. We continue to face an economy whose health and prospects are highly ambiguous, wrenching social change and displacement, and what the founders of this nation would have called foreign entanglements, whose purposes and outcomes are frustratingly unclear. This is the world into which we send you, our graduates. During your time with us, we have worked with you to prepare to succeed in it, and we both profoundly hope and deeply believe that you are ready to do so. In your undergraduate careers, you have grappled with tough circumstances, tough courses, and tough ideas. I trust that you have thought hard and honestly about those tough ideas and learned how to use data and facts and research to pursue the truth. This pursuit is critically important. We are in a world now where structures of authority and truth are in flux and where social media often give the grandest platform to the loudest and most aggressive rather than the most honest and thoughtful. The paradox of the so-called information economy is that while information of all kinds is much more widely available than it has ever been before in human history, the sorting and prioritization of that information has become ever more difficult. For the rest of your lives, one of your most urgent obligations as citizens, professionals, and human beings will be, to borrow a well-known metaphor from the book of Matthew, to sort the wheat of truth from the chaff of noise and contention, burn that chaff, and put the wheat in your barn. In turn, that wheat will sustain not only you and your family, but your entire society. It is probably simpler and less painful not to do this, not to question your assumptions and challenge your easy beliefs, but rather to take the quick answer to remain in your comfort zone. But we, our faculty, the staff, and your colleagues, have failed you if that's what you choose to do. And in turn, you will not have lived to your full potential for yourselves and the world. You have shown resiliency, the ability to face disappointment, frustration, tragedy, and other obstacles, and work through or around them. Certainly, many of you have beaten serious challenges to get here today, and equally pretty certainly, almost all of you will face such challenges in the days and years ahead. But you should feel confident that you have what it takes to work your way through those obstacles. You can build on your experiences so far and take comfort in your successes and lessons from your failures. This confidence will serve you well, particularly when it is coupled with the humility and self-knowledge that will enable you to ask for help when you need it and to build a team of friends, family, and supporters around you that will make the whole greater than the sum of the, its parts individually. Each year, we welcome new students by assuring them that we believe in them and their potential to succeed here at SVC and in the world beyond college. Our efforts at the college are entirely directed towards working with them, you, to put that belief into action. Your presence here today testifies that our teamwork with you has been a success. We are proud of you. We are very, very proud of you. And you should be proud of yourselves. This is a day of joy, a rite of passage that marks the very significant achievement and a milestone from which you should draw great strength. You have done good work. You will do more good work. We are counting on you. Enjoy your special day. Be safe, and my sincere personal congratulations to all of you. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the first of three student speakers. 
Each year, a committee of faculty and staff select a student speaker or a group of student speakers to address the graduating class. Student commencement speakers must meet certain criteria, including completion of all degree requirements. They must earn at least one half of all credits at Southern Vermont College, and they must have achieved a certain minimum GPA. This year, the committee fielded many promising submissions and ended up selecting three speakers who represented different experiences here at the college. That so many graduates wanted the opportunity to speak at their commencement is humbling to me. Each of the three selected said that they were compelled by the opportunity to express their great gratitude for what SVC community has done for them, for the people who supported and inspired them, and helped them become the learners and leaders they are today. We are grateful for having had this uniquely SVC experience too. Our first speaker is psychology major and New York Giants fan, I noticed she was wearing a New York Giants shirt, it was either yesterday or this morning, um, from Northville, New York, and also your 2017 SVC valedictorian, Sarah Yetto. Sarah. <laughs> Good afternoon. Something about this place puts me at peace. It's not a quiet place, no, not by any means. You walk the halls and you hear voices. You hear laughter rattling around like fireflies in a tin can. There is always company around you. This isn't a place suitable for hiding. In some ways, that's intimidating, but in most ways, that is what makes it beautiful. Maybe that is where the tranquility lies. Over the past four years, I have lived in 10 different places. Thankfully, I have had good company all the while, but I will admit it is difficult to be so turbulent. I've lived in five bedroom castles and I've lived in hotel rooms. I've slept in queen-sized beds, and I've slept on coffee tables. I have become happily acquainted with one place, merely to have that stability disrupted by another move. It has been a curse in some ways, and it has been a blessing in others. However, whether I see the adventure as good or bad, I can never trick myself into believing it was easy. In fact, it took a long time before I felt comfortable calling any place home. But I did eventually. Eventually, I did find home. I found it here, at this college, on this campus, with these wonderful people. I found peace. I found me here. In my first month at SVC, I met Linda Sinkowicz, who helped me realize that I love writing too much to give it up, so I didn't. In my last months here, I met Heather Lanier, who convinced me to submit my work for publication. My poetry is now a part of the 2017 spring issue of the Cape Rock Literary Journal. Here at SVC, I met Sarah Nozick, who taught me a lot of things. First, the two people named Sarah can coexist peacefully, <laughs> providing one of us is well equipped with the letter H. Second, that I want to be a teacher too. And third, that true happiness can only be achieved through honesty. Even when things are uncertain, you cannot lose that which makes you who you are. I can't wait to start research with Sarah next semester. By then, it'll be football season once again, and the Giants will make another Super Bowl run. <laughs> it's coming, Sarah. Just wait. And finally, <laughs> at SVC, I met Daisy Levy who showed me that I can, that I am, and that I will. Because of her, I know things will be all right. Not because they will be easy, 
but because I will accept every moment as a worthy experience and take every opportunity to learn. I no longer see the world in terms of winning or losing. I can end up where I want to be. I am capable and I will get there without forgetting to enjoy the ride. Daisy, thank you for every minute I spent in your office, every book you ever threw at me, and every time you told me to just go for it. Because now, for the first time in years, I am truly excited about the future. The thought of leaving SVC isn't an easy one to stomach. You can bet I shed more than a few tears in writing this. But I must remind myself, every time I get sad about leaving, this place is different from any other. This place is peaceful. This place is home. And home is a place you can always come back to. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Jennifer Berg, and it is my pleasure to be with you all on this very special occasion. Today, three students who have completed SVC's Shires Press publishing program are graduating. Over the course of a four-semester curriculum, years of thinking and writing, months of revision, and more than one sleepless night, they created their own manuscripts, and learned about the publishing process with guidance from their SVC professors and the North Shire Bookstore. It has been inspiring to see their progress through this unique program and to see their finished products come to life. Their novels are now published and on the shelf and available for you all to enjoy. They have worked incredibly hard to accomplish this goal and we are deeply impressed by and proud of them. In honor of achieving this milestone, I ask the following students to please come forward. Jose Ferreras, Sierra Mincher, and Sarah Weiler. President Evans, would you please join us so that the students may present you with signed copies of their books. And now we will hear from our second student speaker, English major Judd Eichhorst from Bennington, Vermont. Thank you. Good afternoon. On September 29, 2016, I wrote the following in my journal. It is hard to balance all of this. May 2017 approaches. It is hard to translate this into something useful and meaningful for my future. So as you can see, class of 2017, none are alone in our fears or our hopes about our futures. If you had told me in September that I would be accepted to one of the top graduate programs in my field, I would have said that you were off the mark or that I am not cut out for it. But as I came to learn, and maybe I just needed to relearn, to research myself, as Rupi Kaur says 
in milk and honey. Who said, I want it easy? I don't crave easy. I crave goddamn difficult. <laughs> Each of us struggled to get to this point. Before we walk across this stage, I want to reiterate that getting here was difficult for all of us. We all knew when each other was struggling, even if we didn't see it. We didn't need to be explicitly told one another's stories in order to gain meaning from them, which is a beautiful thing about SBC and our time here. And now I'll tell you a short story about this last year from me at SBC. I had just left the Moose Lounge when I decided to break my hand on the side of Hunter's finely constructed exterior wall. As I am not the type to punch or break things, I decided a change of pace was clearly in the schedule for that evening. Now I immediately recognized I just broke the hell out of my hand. <laughs> there in the rain, with a good howl of my pain and sobbing, came Chanelli. Chanelli, will you please stand? <laughs> Small and mighty. <laughs> Thank you, Shinelli, for everything. With the broken hand and some unintelligible version of recent events, Shinelli knew to help me at that time, even though she didn't know my story. At that time, we were not that close, but she could see that I was in pain. She helped me. She believed in me. She did this without really knowing me. And while she didn't set the bone in my hand, she knew who I was and what I needed in that moment. This balance we enjoy here. In this tent, we are all now a bit more familiar with one another because we just shared in something remarkable, the balancing that sharing a story has brought between us. When I approached this stage, it would have been too easy to spin some cautionary moral tale about what we face in the real world when we graduate, or how much all this book learning will eventually pay off. I began this speech saying that I crave the goddamn difficult, and I mean that. Telling this story makes me vulnerable I am telling it because I know I am in front of people that I can trust. At SBC, we've gone beyond the mere matter of academics. We have learned one thing above all others. There is meaning in one another without knowing their story. That November, after breaking my hand, I missed National Novel Writing Month. Who would have thought? I also applied to and was accepted to Michigan State University, where I will now go to earn my master's in student affairs administration. I did all this in one month with a broken hand, only because of the support that this place, these faculty and staff behind me, and you before me, the class of 2017 has given me. SVC has given me balance. I did not get here alone. None of us did. Thank you to my advisors, confidants, and mentors, Daisy Levy and Linda Sinkowich. Thank you to the rare library cat. Thank you to Maria Francis, Nick Carpio, and my boss, Jason Sampler, for their recommendations, career advice, and hearing me complain about graduate school before I was ever accepted, or before 
I have even yet to attend. This list is far from complete. And thank you all, class of 2017, for being here with me. I know most of you, some of you know me, but I feel after today, when we receive our diplomas, that we will have a new meaning of one another. We have a shared story here, now. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2017. Thank you, Judd. At commencement, it is customary to acknowledge the students who have graduated with the highest grade point averages in their class, our valedictorians and salutatorians of the class of 2017. I ask the following individuals to please stand and turn and face the audience, and please remain standing while I announce each name. And audience, please hold all applause until I have finished reading both names. The valedictorian, the student earning the highest academic achievement of the class of 2017 is a psychology major from Northville, New York, Sari Yeddo. The salutatorian, the student graduating with the next highest academic achievement of the class, is a radiologic sciences major from Gloucester, Massachusetts, Melody Ann Orell. Please give another round of applause to the 2017 SBC Valley Forum and Salute Thank you. We now move on to the presentation of the three institutional awards traditionally given at SVC commencement. Our first award, the William A. Glasser Award, is given to the bachelor's degree candidate who best exemplifies the mission of SVC as championed by Dr. William Glasser during his years as president. Nominated by faculty and staff, the award recipient must have demonstrated outstanding personal and academic growth while at the college. The 2017 recipient of this award has dedicated herself in nearly all aspects of college life since her arrival here four years ago. As an admissions ambassador, a leader of the Radiologic Sciences Club, a residence advisor, and a course apprentice and peer tutor, just to name a few of her extracurricular activities. On the athletic playing fields, most recently and admirably as one of the captains of the women's lacrosse team, she helped the team earn a berth in the conference playoffs last week. She sets the bar high for herself and for all of her teammates, according to her lacrosse coach, and her effort is second to none. She is described by her professors as a bright, articulate, conscientious student with superior work ethics. And today, she graduates with highest honors, summa cum laude. Please congratulate the 2017 William A. Glasser Award recipient from Gloucester, Massachusetts, and also our salutatorian, Melody Ann Orell. The Edward H. Everett Award acknowledges a graduating student who has made numerous contributions to the Southern Vermont College community. The recipient personifies a spirit of giving, a willingness to work hard, and dedication, all qualities attributed to Edward Everett, the original owner of the Everett Estate. The 2017 recipient of this award exemplifies all of these qualities. She is, as one of her nominators said, the epitome of a leader, 
Most notably and admirably, she led the Student Government Association this past year, where she created new opportunities to assure student engagement. She has also served on the Mountaineer Events Board, the Biology Club, as an athlete, and much more during her time here. An excellent student academically, she found the time to assist others as a peer tutor. She is highly respected by her peers, faculty, and staff. Through all her hard work and some adversity, she has remained a most positive and professional role model for others. We are extremely proud of this graduate as she takes her well-honed talents into the world and continues her education in graduate school to become an athletic trainer. Please congratulate the recipient of the 2017 Edward Everett Award from Charlton, Massachusetts, Emily Marie Bagley. The Linda Curry Memorial Award is given in memory of a former faculty member in the Hunter Division of the Humanities. Curry was a first generation college student and while teaching at SVC was devoted to fulfilling the college's mission to help each student realize his or her full potential. This year's recipient of the Linda Curry Award is a non-traditional student pursuing her SVC degree while single-handedly raising her two sons and working a demanding job as Director of Financial Aid at Bennington College. She began her education years ago at SUNY Cobleskill, earning an associate's degree, but her dreams of obtaining her bachelor's were put on hold due to a medical crisis in the family. When she could focus on her education again, she came to SVC and over 10 semesters earned her degree. Today, she graduates with honors, magna cum laude. Her path was not always easy, yet she wowed her professors with her commitment to excellence, her generous and open spirit with her peers, and a capstone project for a cooperative which promotes environmentally sustainable healthcare products. We know we will hear more good things about this lifelong learner in the future. Please congratulate the 2017 Linda Curry Award recipient from Hoosick Falls, New York, Heather Elaine Clifford. Okay, our third and final student speaker today is Jashela Thomas, a, a biological science major from Caparis Cove, Texas. Um, hello, SVC community, family, and friends. Since I was a little girl, there were two things that I was absolutely certain about, being a doctor and going to Spelman College to achieve that goal. Well, only one of those things remained true once it came time for me to actually go to college. After much consideration and a couple of visits, I decided to transfer to Southern Vermont College my sophomore year. The beautiful views, the friendly students, the accessible faculty and staff, it was all just so perfect and I fell in love. It was all just so perfect until it wasn't. <laughs> I believe Charles Dickens was referring to college when he wrote the famous paradox, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. <laughs> Everyone tells you that college will be the best time of your life, but no one tells you how terrible it is, too. 
from your first and every interaction with financial aid, <laughs> to not getting into the classes that you need to graduate, to missing your family and friends, college can be awful. Having a solid support system is key in making it through the most stressful parts. So I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the people who have helped us along this great and tumultuous journey. To all the moms, dads, grandparents, guardians, siblings, aunts, uncles, and cousins, thank you for your unwavering support. Even when we changed our major from accounting to philosophy and back again. <laughs> To all of the professors, maintenance and housekeeping staff, IT guys, librarians, tutors, coaches, Sodexo workers, and administration, thank you for all that you have done in making every day go as smoothly and comfortably as possible. To anyone that I missed, just know that we appreciate all that you have done for us. Now I would like to take a moment to speak to my class. Guys, we did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As much as we owe our success to those around us, and as much as we should show our appreciation to them, take a minute to think about what we're doing here today. Today is a celebration of all that we have endured and accomplished. We knew that we would write countless papers, take countless exams, and sit through countless hours of lecture. We did all of these things in order to be sitting here today. SVC has provided us with opportunities to excel, fail, and learn things about ourselves that we otherwise wouldn't have. Who knew that you could write a 10-page paper the night before it was due and still ace it? <laughs> Who knew that you could watch three seasons of Shameless in one weekend? <laughs> Who would have thought that English would be more of a struggle than physics? <laughs> Who knew that sleep deprivation would take on an entirely different meaning? And who knew that you could balance school, sports, work, extracurriculars, and somehow still manage to have a social life. I think it's safe to say that the experiences that we had and shared contributed to our being at this ceremony just as much as our schoolwork has. Now we are able to take all that we have learned from textbooks and from our experiences and apply them to be the best radiological technicians, authors, physicians assistants, entrepreneurs, nurses, vets, psychologists, cops, and doctors that we can be. Mark Twain once said, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones that you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. It is time for us to leave our safe harbor. Explore the dreams we're working so hard to make come true and discover what life has to offer. Congratulations, class of 2017. We did it. <laughs>Shayla drove a, uh, drew a giant smiley face on the page of the script, <laughs> or, 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 or somebody did, <laughs> which is great. Thanks, Shayla. Bestowing an honorary degree is a way an institution honors individuals who have contributed in significant ways to, the field, uh, to a field of study or to so society at large. The Latin phrase for an honorary degree is honoris causa, which means for the sake of honor. The honorary doctorate is the highest honor an academic institution can bestow. Today, we will award the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters, honoris causa, to a gentleman who has dedicated himself both personally and professionally to making a difference in student access to technology and education. As an executive at IBM for 44 years during a time of great growth and technological change, Nicholas D'Onofrio was a leader in the innovations that underpin many aspects of modern information technology. Nick's development and manufacturing teams were creative game changers. He himself holds seven technology patents, and in 2008, he was named an, as an IBM fellow, the company's highest honor. Throughout his career, Nick D'Onofrio 
uh, has worked to advance education, employment, and opportunities for underrepresented minorities and women. Since his retirement, he has devoted even more of himself to this cause. In addition to his many professional board affiliations, Nick has served many organizations that help promote education, in particular in the STEM fields. He holds a master's and a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from Syracuse and Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, respectively. In our commencement program, you can read a bit more about his numerous accomplishments, boards he participates on, and societies he's been invited to be a part of worldwide. There is much more to this remarkable person's life than we could possibly fit on a page. And on top of all that he's done, he's very much a great and balanced guy. Uh, the first time I met Nick, uh, what we started talking about was old cars. Um, he's very much a great and balanced guy, which made me pose the question, how does he do it? How does he fit all of these things in? Nick acknowledges that, quote, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Actually, he said more precisely, because he's an engineer, that we have 86,400 seconds in a day, and that he uses his time wisely. He emphasized the importance of prioritizing, staying focused on what matters, and a theme we heard earlier from our board chair, striving to make a difference. Nick added that he always keeps in mind that at any point he may not have more time, and that keeps him motivated and moving. I also wanted to know what is it among all of Nick's many accomplishments that he is most proud of? And his answer does not surprise me, but it is something I want all of you graduating today to remember. For all this man has accomplished in work that mattered and in service to others, he is most proud of his family, his wife, who was his high school sweetheart, and his two sons and their families who are watching live through our online stream this afternoon. Nick said at the end of the day, it is their achievements and the support he has given his family that enables, him to be, uh, that enables them to be their best and make their own difference in the world. And that is what distinguishes him and his work. For his outstanding accomplishments, his many contributions in both technology and education, and for his dedication to higher education in general and to underrepresented students in particular, we are so pleased and honored to grant Nicholas M. D'Onofrio the Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. May I ask Ira Wagner and Nina Moser for their assistance, please? I now welcome to join us for the conferring of an honorary degree of Humane Letters Nicholas M. D'Onofrio. <laughs> Chair Wagner, it gives me honor and pleasure to present Nicholas M. D'Onofrio for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Southern Vermont College, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. Congratulations, Nick. I now present to you Dr. Nicholas M. D'Onofrio, who will address the class of 2017. Well, wow. uh, it's terrific. You know, I'm looking at this book where all of the scripts are, and here's my remarks. It's a blank page. <laughs> and that's dangerous uh, for someone like me. Um, you know, being Italian, I'm also a little emotional, so you'll have to kind of bear with me a little bit as I get my bearings and get my feet under me. First, congratulations to all of the graduates. And better than that, I'm now one of you. <laughs> and don't forget, Nina will be running after you as soon as you get your degree as an alum here. Very important to help enable people who helped enable you. 
There are so many things that I could talk about today. I'm not sure you're really interested in them because I actually know why you're here. And I know, according to the agenda, I'm the last person before you walk. The walk? <laughs> you don't want to hear the talk. You've heard enough of that. But I have to say a few words to you and try to give you a little perspective that perhaps you don't have. I'm an engineer. I spent a good deal of my life creating value from an engineering and science perspective. One correction to David's opening remarks. I did not retire from IBM. I graduated from IBM. And that graduation became the commencement of the rest of my life. And that's the way you have to be thinking about this. This graduation ends nothing. It begins everything. That's why oftentimes they're called commencement exercises. There is no finality. There's no finality to anything ahead of you other than what you choose to end. The world is changing rapidly. It's changing faster and faster each day. As far as we've come, in the past 100 years, we will do that again in the next 50 years. Very few of you were there before the internet. <laughs> I was. I actually remember life <laughs> when the cell phone was a 10 pound brick that you paid $2,000 for, for the privilege of talking to four people. <laughs> More to come. 10 years from now, five years from now, 20 years from now, they'll be telling those same stories about what you think is the state of the art technology today. Underneath all of that, though, there are two very important concepts I want to leave you with. The first is this idea of true innovation. It's the creation of value. It can be societal value, political value, educational value, and it can be business value. We often don't think of innovation that way. It's the opportunity that lies at the intersection of other opportunity, at the space where no one goes. It's the intersection of things that have not been intersected before. And underneath it all, underneath it all, even though you're not engineers, some of you are scientists, everyone can be an innovator. Everyone can be an innovator. It has little to do with innovation, invention, or technology, or discovery. It can, but in the end, it's proven over and over again it isn't. The more you know about the problem, the better innovator you're going to become. The more you start with the problem as opposed to the answer, the better innovator you are going to be. And that should be on your agenda. An environment conducive to innovation, collaboration. You sound like your collaborators. At least those talks I heard just a few minutes, minutes ago sound like that's what you do here. Openness. Openness. Open to other people's ideas, open to other people's progress, open to other people's success. Globalness. Don't forget, you live in a very small world if all you live in is where you are. Think about what's going on around us. There's going to be 9 billion people on this planet soon. The bulk of them are going to be living at the base of the pyramid. 
The bulk of them have no desire to stay there. The bulk of them are going to work harder than you to get out from there. That talent needs to be tapped, utilized, encouraged. There's a, a very important phrase I learned at IBM. Even the underserved shall lead. You're very naive to think that the only good ideas are going to come from people like you and I. That's the innovative thought process. That's the innovative environment. You add to that multidiscipline thinking, which you of all people should be capable of, given who you are and where you were educated. You put that all together. It's a recipe for success. It's a recipe for the future. It could be a recipe for the rest of your life. You mix that with what they taught you here and the environment they taught it to you in, this amazingly inclusive environment. That's the word I want you to remember. It's inclusion. Whoever you are, there's always going to be somebody in your life you would like out of your life. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Or if you do it, you do it with great risk and in great peril. Because you have no idea if that person has the last piece to the puzzle. A priori, you know so little. Start cutting them out, and I can guarantee you, it's going to be a challenging and difficult life for you. And this is going to, this is going to multiply. This is going to advance. We're not just talking about women or people of color. We're talking about all kinds of things when we say inclusion. Lots of people think differently than we do. We're going to have to include them too. Hopefully you learned that here. Hopefully that's what they'll never take away. Because you know what? The information you learned here is not what's going to make a difference for you. It's not. It's going to become obsolete before you actually get to do anything meaningful with it. What you learned here is how to think. What you learned here, I would hope, and most importantly, is not what you know, but what to do about what you don't know. Because your life is full of don't knows. You may not know it, <laughs> but trust me. At 72 years old, I actually know a little bit about what I'm talking about. <laughs> I could go on with you. Um, you know, when David asked me and Nina asked me to consider coming here, I wanted to know why. You know, got a lot of people. You, you heard David. It's an honor to be given an honorary degree. It's a true honor. Um, in, in many ways, it's, it's, more, it's more of an honor than working hard to get an honest PhD because there's so many people you could give it to. I think the alignment here is for the common cause. You're at an institution of higher education. You're about to graduate with it. They cared a great deal about what it cost you, how efficient, how effective it was. You have a marvelous faculty who gave everything they had for you. And in the end, that's what makes great colleges and universities, great students and great faculty. So to all of you, truly, congratulations. And I'm going to give you my wish now. I have been giving this wish to people for as long as I learned it. <clears throat> First and foremost, I wish you health. Without it, it's hard. Health of your body, your soul, your heart, and your mind. Health, truly, truly important. Secondly, 
I wish you happiness. Happiness in whatever form it manifests itself for you. Happiness. Please don't do things you're not happy doing. Please don't do that. You are going to work so hard and get paid so little. You should enjoy it. They're never going to pay you what you're worth. They certainly didn't pay me what I was worth. Happiness. True happiness. Whatever that means to you. And your, your partner, your spouse, your family, your loved ones. Factor all that in when you think about happiness. Third, prosperity. Prosperity. In whatever form you, it manifests itself in your life. Prosperity. There's richness of all kinds. Prosper. Prosper for that heart, soul, mind, and body. And yeah, I wish you a lot of money too. I really do. And so does Nina, and so does David. <laughs> and don't forget here. Don't forget your alma mater. It took care of you. At some point in time, you're going to have to take care of it. So it's health, happiness, prosperity. And then the last point, the true last point, is I wish you all the time possible to enjoy them all. All the time you need to take advantage of health, happiness, and prosperity. David said it. There's 86,400 seconds in a day. We all have the same number. What did you do with them? What are you doing with them? Oh, we'll do that tomorrow. Oh, don't worry about it. You know, we'll do it next week. Well, you know, for those of you who are very young, that's understandable. For those of us who are very old, it's not understandable. There may not be a tomorrow, or it may not be the tomorrow the way it is today. Please understand, time is not your friend. It is not your ally. In the end, it literally ends up working against you. You run out of it. Keep that in mind. All of that, my wish to you, dear classmates, dear graduates of the class of 2017 here at Southern Vermont College. I'll be with you in whatever way I can. I will help this college in whatever way I can. And to each and every one of you, if I can help you, don't be bashful. They have my email. They have my cell phone. They're going to use it to their advantage. You might as well use it to your advantage. To all of the wonderful family and friends, and especially to the mothers. Happy Mother's Day weekend to each and every one of you. God bless you all, and good luck to you all. Good afternoon. It is my honor as Provost and Dean of the College to award certificates of higher education to graduates of our College Steps program. The students receiving certificates today had to meet a number of criteria set by the Regional College Steps organization within a two-year time frame, including four semesters of coursework and completion of an internship, as well as participation in many campus activities. I ask President Evans to come forward to assist in awarding the College Steps certificates. President Evans, it is my pleasure to report that in the judgment of the Southern Vermont College faculty and within the College Steps program criteria, 
the following students have satisfactorily fulfilled all requirements to receive their higher education certificates. Jamie Gordon Cranston, please come forward. <laughs> Stephanie Ann Ostrander, please come forward. Congratulations to our College Steps Certificate students. Three students who are receiving diplomas today have also earned their certificate in Computed Tomography Imaging, an advanced 16 credit program for radiologic technologists. President Evans, it gives me honor and pleasure to present these candidates and to report that, based on the Southern Vermont College Radiologic Technology Program criteria, they have satisfactorily fulfilled all requirements to receive their computed tomography certificates. Students, please come forward as your name is announced. Kaylee Ray Cross. Kelsey Hawkins. Abigail Justine Rosas. Congratulations to our Computed Tomography Certificate recipients. And now, I ask President Evans and Registrar Sampler to please join me in conferring the degrees. We will present the Class of Baccalaureate and Associate Degree recipients. Will the Baccalaureate and Associate Degree candidates please stand? <laughs> Chair Wagner and President Evans, it gives me honor and pleasure to present these candidates for the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Associate Degrees, and to report that, in the judgment of the faculty, they have satisfactorily fulfilled all requirements for their degrees. This is the big moment. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Southern Vermont College, I hereby confer upon you, as appropriate, the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, or Associate of Arts, with all the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. Please be seated. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Associate of Arts degrees please come forward and receive their diplomas? Receiving Associate's Degree of Arts with a major in Liberal Arts, Clara Grace Staples. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Science Degree with a major in Business Administration, Brandon Patrick Casella. Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Business Administration, Michaela Christine Crowley. Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Business Administration, Aidan Dearborn Fisher. Receiving a Bachelor of Science Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Business Administration, Joshua Adam Hay. <laughs> Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree with a double major in Business Administration and Psychology and graduating cum laude, Chanelli Mercedes Marmalejos. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Business Administration, 
Daniel Rosario. Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree of the Major in Business Administration, Amelia Sue Ann Wistuk. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree, a major in Business Administration, Entrepreneurship, Zachary Taylor Frank. <laughs> Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Business Administration, in Sports, Recreation, and Tourism Management, Dylan Angelo. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Business Administration, Sports, Recreation, and Tourism Management, Taylor William Baker. <laughs> Receiving a Receiving a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Business Administration, Sports Recreation, and Tourism Management, Jeffrey L. James. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Business Administration, Sports Recreation, and Tourism Management, Shailani Fusalua Kaliopa. Receiving a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Business Administration, Sports, Recreation, and Tourism Management, Anthony Joseph Mercury. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Business Administration, in Sports, Recreation, and Tourism Management, and graduating cum laude, Nicholas David Vassie. Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree and a major in Communication, Robert John Hindley. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in Creative Writing, Jose Emilio Ferreras. <laughs> Recipient of a Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in Creative Writing, Nishan Simeon Kemp. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in Creative Writing and graduating summa cum laude, Sierra Caitlin Mincher. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in Creative Writing and English and graduating summa cum laude, Sarah Marie Weiler. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in English and graduating summa cum laude, Judd Eichhorst. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in Liberal Arts, graduating magna cum laude, Heather Elaine Clifford. Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Liberal Arts, Jacob Ross Mirworth. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Nursing, Pablo Theodore Aguirre. <laughs> Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Nursing, Tegan Marie Chavetti. Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Nursing, Mariah Grace Hinckley. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Nursing and graduating magna cum laude, Desiree Elizabeth Myers. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree, major in nursing, and graduating cum laude, Nina Peterson. Re 
recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in nursing, Nicole Lee Principato. <laughs> Graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree, a major in Biological Sciences, Emily Marie Bagley. <laughs> Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Biological Sciences and graduating magna cum laude, Kylie May Bork. Receiving a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Biological Sciences, Victoria Anne Marie Cotter. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Biological Sciences, Jalisa Tierra Kathleen Johnson. Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Biological Sciences and graduating magna cum laude, Lauren Justine Nessover. <laughs> Receiving a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Biological Sciences, Amanda Marie Onodi. Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Biological Sciences and graduating magna cum laude, Megan Lindsay Riley. <laughs> Recipient of a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Biological Sciences, Jacqueline K. Scanlon. Recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Biological Sciences and graduating cum laude, Ryan Michael Terry. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Biological Sciences, graduating magna cum laude, Jashela Thomas. Recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Biological Sciences, Shelby Marie Whitman. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Radiologic Sciences, Jordan Elizabeth Alves. Graduating Bachelor of Science degree and majoring in Radiologic Sciences, Oriana Amalia Bissell. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Radiologic Sciences, Kaylee Ray Cross. <laughs> Recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Radiologic Sciences, Catherine Gardner. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Radiologic Sciences, Jason Garvey. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Radiologic Sciences, Kelsey Hawkins. Recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Radiologic Sciences, Tyler Adam Lenentine. <laughs> graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree, a major in Radiologic Sciences, and graduating magna cum laude, Emily Teresa Lachure. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Radiologic Sciences, Katie Marie McGlory. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Radiologic Sciences and graduating cum laude, Abigail Marilyn Molnar. <laughs> Recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree the major in radiologic sciences and graduating summa cum laude, 
Melody Ann Orell. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in radiologic sciences and graduating cum laude, Hannah Catherine Preto. <laughs> Recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in radiologic sciences, Julia Marie Quill. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Radiologic Sciences and graduating summa cum laude, Matthew Augustus Riccio. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree and double majoring in Radiologic Sciences and Psychology, Sarah Crystal Roberts. Recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Radiologic Sciences, graduating magna cum laude, Abigail Chestine Rosas. <laughs> graduating with a degree, a Bachelor of Science degree and a major in Radiologic Sciences, Erin Elizabeth Ryan. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Criminal Justice and graduating cum laude, Corey Barcombe. <laughs> Recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Criminal Justice, Laura Kathleen Bien. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in criminal justice, Mallory Allen Kano Scribner. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in criminal justice and graduating cum laude, Corbin Andrew Dean. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Criminal Justice, Ashton Lee McNeil. <laughs> Recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Criminal Justice, Patrick Griffin O'Toole. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Criminal Justice, Rayshawn Devante Taylor. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in healthcare and community advocacy and graduating magna cum laude, Kelly Ann Bridges. <laughs> Recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in healthcare and community advocacy, Elena Joan Curtis. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in History and Politics, Latasia Patterson. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Psychology and graduating cum laude, Amy Elizabeth Campbell. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Psychology, Anthony Bosco Contreras. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in Psychology, Irvin Patrick Cook. Recipient of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in psychology and graduating cum laude, Amber Jean Dow. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in psychology, Avery Ford.
receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in psychology, Jerrica Simone Henry. <laughs> receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in psychology, Darian Alexandra James. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a double major in psychology and criminal justice, Skylar McKenna McGuire. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in psychology, Elizabeth Marie Simonowitz. Receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in psychology, Jordan Ann Marie Welch. And receiving the Bachelor of Science degree with a major in psychology, graduating summa cum laude, Sarah Yeddo. Okay, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the college community, please join me in congratulating the Southern Vermont College Baccalaureate and Associate Degree Class of 2017. Having now conferred all of the degrees, we now perform the ceremonial tradition that symbolizes the achievement of your respective degrees. Would all of the graduates please stand? And would the valedictorian Sarietto and salutatorian Melody Orell come forward and face the graduates? Turning the tassels marks the transition from candidate to graduate. I ask the graduates to join the valedictorian and salutatorian as they move their tassels from right to left, the sign of an earned degree. Congratulations. be seated. And now to deliver the farewell remarks to the graduates on behalf of the faculty, please welcome Professor Sarah Nosek. I love you too. <laughs> Good afternoon to everybody who's here and everybody who's watching from home. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> um, we started from the bottom. <laughs> now we're here. Thank you, guys. I did it. That was for you. <laughs> Most of you sitting here today would be considered, by virtue of your age, a member of the millennial generation. I'm sure you've heard that before. Historically, you are the largest generation with a population of approximately 80 million. You're also the most educated with 63% receiving bachelor's degrees. You are not only the most diverse generation, but also the generation most accepting of diversity. It's important. You are the most generous generation. 84% of working millennials gave to charity in 2015. By the year 2025, you will make up 75% of the global workforce. And you are expected 
it's all good, to change the world with your confidence, assertiveness, and technological savviness. These attributes have made you this country's most progressive and powerful generation yet. However, in the words of the great French philosopher Voltaire, with great power comes great responsibility. And yes, that's in the Spider-Man movie too. So. <laughs> <laughs> that might be where I got it. That, <laughs> in my experience, is why your cohort has also been labeled the most anxious generation in our country's history. The world you live in is fast-paced, constantly changing, and full of uncertainty. As a result, anxiety has become the norm rather than the exception. Therefore, as a professor and mentor to many of you over the years, I've thought deeply about one lesson you may not have learned yet, that may help you to decrease anxiety and live happy, fulfilling lives. So today I'm challenging you to begin your search for the lost art of self-compassion. First, let me compliment you on the compassion that you have shown toward others in your time at SVC. Through the service learning component of the academic curriculum, you've organized anti-bullying and anti-violence events on campus. You've developed philanthropy projects that give back to your community. You've cooked meals for the clients of the Bennington Free Clinic and interned and volunteered at several organizations in the community, including the Center for Restorative Justice Child Advocacy Center. Outside of the classroom, you have been mentors in the College Steps program. You formed the Class of 2017 Committee and raised your own funds to make the campus a better place. Members of the club Colleges Against Cancer hosted a well-publicized and successful hair donation event and SVC for Justice held a hunger banquet on campus. As student athletes, your coaches emphasized the importance of giving back to the community. The women's soccer team made and delivered Valentine's Day cards to the veterans' home. The baseball team organized and prepared food packages for clients at the Foothill Unity Center in Pasadena, California as part of their annual trip over spring break. Sorry, I got emotional for a minute. Oh, I'm okay. And the track and field and cross country teams organized a bottle and can drive, donating all proceeds to the Pownall Elementary School's Spirit of Sharing program. Over the past four years, you have shown a great deal of compassion to members of your communities. My question is, how have you shown compassion for yourself? Mastering the art of self-compassion is a process that is gradual and takes practice, and I am by no means an expert. However, I want to leave you with a few tips that I've learned in my own journey towards self-compassion that may help you to begin. At the end of the day, you can't change the world until you've changed the way you live in it. My first tip is to try to emphasize internal rewards over external rewards whenever possible. In today's society, we have learned to strive for and focus on external rewards for behavior, such as praise from others, money, and prestige. However, research shows that those who are intrinsically motivated in their careers are happier, more productive, and in the end, more successful. The research says, one last time for my students, <laughs> one last time. So here is my advice. Today, you are celebrating the fact that you have worked hard, and as a result, have earned a college degree. This is an amazing accomplishment, but please remember that the internal rewards for your hard work, including the fact that you have been forever changed by the things you've learned and the people that you have met here, is much more valuable than the piece of paper that you hold in your hand. If you can seek and find intrinsic motivation in all you do, you will show greater compassion to yourself and thus everyone around you. My second tip is to make stress your friend. <laughs> According to health psychologist Dr. Kelly McGonigal, Stress is only harmful if you allow it to be harmful. If you can reimagine your stressors as challenges and use that stress to energize you to meet those challenges, you will live a longer, healthier, and more fulfilling life. The research says, I promise. Earlier, I mentioned that you have been labeled the most anxious generation. I don't believe that you're doomed to remain that way. Lauren Ladner states that anxiety is a state of dwelling in fear without using it for any positive purpose. Figure out what makes you anxious or stressed and let it motivate you to achieve more in life. If it doesn't motivate you, let it go. I'm not gonna sing from Frozen. 
I only do that in the classroom. My third and final tip is this, but I know it's in your head. Take some time each day to be alone with your own heart and mind. As we attempt to embrace who we are, today's society presents us with many distractions. The internet keeps us plugged in 24 seven. My advice to you is to unplug, at least for a few minutes every day, to be present and to show yourself loving kindness. I hope that today, in the midst of celebration, you will find time for a moment of reflection and introspection. The day after today, and every day after that, find an activity that brings you peace. Journaling, meditation, drawing, and make time for it even on your busiest of days. Don't be afraid to be alone with your thoughts and feelings. Be kind to yourself. Congratulations to you, the class of 2017. As you go forth to make the world a better place, remember in the words of the great Buddha, you, yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nosek. As we approach the end of our 90th commencement, I want to thank everyone who helps make this event happen so seamlessly. A special thank you to those working behind the scenes, the technicians who helped us with today's production, the hardworking SVC facilities crew who camp keep this campus looking beautiful, and campus safety who do so much to keep our students safe. I thank our faculty and staff who together enable student success. I thank our trustees for their time and dedication to this wonderful institution. And I thank our honored guest, Mr. D'Onofrio, and all of our families and friends who shared in this special day with us. Now let us turn our attention once again to music, this time performed by members of SVC's choir. And if you see 
Thank you, Professor Despard and the choir. As we prepare to close the ceremonies, I ask that the audience remain at their seats until the platform party, faculty, and the graduates have processed out of the tent. I hope that you will all please join us for refreshments at the Everett Mansion following the ceremony. Class of 2017, on behalf of the Southern Vermont College Board of Trustees, President Evans, and our faculty and staff, we wish you every success in your next steps in life. As now official members of the SVC Alumni Association, please remember this special place and special time in your life and do stay in touch. Audience, please join us in congratulating once more all of the graduates. As the board chair, I declare the 90th commencement ceremony for Southern Vermont College officially closed. <laughs>